Okay. Uh, this is the Inland Wetlands and Conservation Commission public meeting for Wednesday, May 25th, 2022. It's a special meeting to cover the agenda from a week ago. Uh, we're holding it as a virtual meeting in accordance with the governor's executive order. I'm Ren Owen, I'm filling in for our chairperson, uh, Brian, who couldn't be with us. So I'll be uh, acting as chairperson. Uh, first of all, public comments. Uh, do we have any comments of a general nature from the public? Uh, there are none. Okay, we'll go on to the public meeting. Uh, first application is number 742-22, CCC Construction, 5 Vinny Drive, Lot 16, 042-032. And it's an application for replanting within regulated wetland and restoration within a conservation easement. Uh, could have somebody on behalf of the applicant? Yeah, so um, I don't have the drawings with me and I don't know how to do them over the computer, but uh, Derek marked uh, two drawings. One was the conservation easement uh, where we cleared out all the, uh, the prickers and, and, and the stuff that's considered invasive. Um, I, I think I, I walked and showed uh, John with it, um, so he uh, hopefully saw it uh, and understood what we did. We did not clear any trees in the conservation area. We did not cut anything down in the wetlands area. Um, everything that was done was at the elevations of their current consistency, or I mean current existence. Um, and all we did was by accident, the, uh, the landscaper moved the rock that I pointed out to John that was not to be disturbed and they moved it. And then they got that little green tip uh, and ended up seeding it by accident. Um, and then again, the conservation easement was just cleared when the uh, prickers went into it and the uh, soft uh, vegetative trees that are considered invasives. Um, so that's what we did by accident. Um, well, when I was away, they did the lawn, so I couldn't stop them. And now we need to address the issue. Right. Um, so you, you've seen uh, Derek Gregor's memorandum. And his, I saw uh, Derek's memo. I got confused because where he's pointing out the conservation easement, I don't know if he's asking me to plant in wetlands because that elevation is five feet higher than the actual wetlands area. So whatever wetland vegetation I plant, I don't know if it's going to grow because I'm not good enough to answer that. We didn't fill in the area. As I, as I understand what he said, it, oh, does somebody else have a comment? I thought I heard something. No? Okay. As I understand what he said, it looks like you pointed out in your plan, the tip of the wetlands was seeded. And then there was another section on the conservation easement that apparently was in some fashion cleared and seeded. And as I read his memo, he's not saying that that tip part has to be filled in. It looks like he's recommending a couple of areas that are in the conservation easement that he would like to see planted with wetlands plantings. Um, he's, he's noting that the area he thought was clear was about, uh, did I see it, 850 square feet, 600 in the uh, conservation easement, 250 in the wetlands area. And he's suggesting two areas in the conservation easement of 300 square feet each that he would like and is recommending that they be replanted. So is that? I, I do have an issue with it because the first one off to the far right where it says recommended wetland restoration within the conservation easement area A, I mean area plus or minus 300 square feet, those soils are there. And as I mentioned to John and I showed him that area is existing soils and it's five feet above the wetland areas what was in there and you can still see it because it's growing back to a certain degree are very small, soft saplings. Um, and then the poison ivy and the pricker bushes and the vines that are still there is what's coming back in that area. 
And if we just wait seven more weeks, they'll be fully grown. So you're saying that's in the area that is denoted as the conservation easement area? Yes. And John, can you verify that? Am I in the right area? Am I reading it right? Did you see what I was telling them? Yeah, I can comment after the uh, public hearing is over, um, Frank. Oh, okay. So I, I didn't know that, but I, I walked John through everything um, so that he saw it firsthand and I try to explain it as best I could. Um, and then the area to the left on the inside, recommended wetlands, that is heavily vegetated with um, pricker bushes, poison ivy, um, and some prickerly trees. And to get in there to do that work, it, I'm going to disturb more, I think, to get in and then just do it and leave it alone and let it grow back. I'd rather do a little bit more restoration on the tip and bring it back if need be. And, and, and be done. Okay. Um, okay. Um, that being said, commissioners, do you have any questions for Mr. Tobacco? Uh, this is Lou. I don't, I don't have any questions, but um, it seems to be that uh, we, Derek is a little different on the opinion than, um, than Mr. DeBacco. And I, I understand what Mr. DeBacco is saying too, relative to the, the property, um, not having been there and see it, I understand, I know the area fairly well. So I'm thinking that maybe, um, I, I don't know what we can do other than have uh, a Derek go back and clarify, you know, what's going on here. I don't know, Brent, if we can um, pass anything relative to, because it is a special meeting now, relative to uh, Derek and uh, Mr. DeBacco uh, coming to an agreement. I mean, so you're saying basically you feel that the property needs to be looked at again by Derek and- Well, apparently, unless John has um, some comments after to uh, clarify a little bit, it seems like what Mr. DeBacco is saying is uh, uh, you know, definitely different than uh, what Derek had put in for the recommendations. Uh, any other commissioners with uh, questions for Mr. DeBacco on this one? I'll just, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman, I just comment that I think it's got to be worked out between the two parties that are t talking about this, between Mr. DeBacco and between the town engineer. It's going to require standing there and having a meeting on the site and agreeing on it between them. It's, it's pretty hard for us, uh, based on the uh, dialogue that we're hearing today, to, to change what it is or to, or to make a decision. It's, it's got to be worked out between those two people. Okay. Um, uh, Commissioner Nelson, you got any um, questions or comments? No, how about Commissioner Calabrese? I no? guess from my um, perspective, it looks like uh, the town engineer was looking for a restoration of this area that's overgrown right. okay. with the prickers and the rambles and whatnot. And um, I recognize that that's not easy work to do. Um, you know, so it's yep. kind of looking for an enhancement for something that was lost. So I understand why it's not a, you know, an even swap or just fix what got lost, but it's, it's a, an enhancement and, and more than was lost. Right. So. I see. Okay. Friend, I'm, I'm sorry to butt in, but is it possible for John to comment? Because I walked with him and explained everything. He has visual knowledge of it. Um, yeah, um, as long as all the uh, commissioners have uh, said what they want to say or ask their questions. Uh, well, if all the questions are done. Yeah, I, I, I would like to hear from John if he wouldn't mind. Okay. So um, just to take the commissioners through. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
Um, for the record, this is John Mills and Lynn Wetland's agent. I know we got uh, our secretary with us. So what I just wanted to take everyone through, if you're seeing the screen and the comments from Derek, um, because going through it uh, and along with, as uh, Frank said a couple of times, I've been out there and I've walked it with him, um, is, you know, the, verb, the, the written comments uh, speak to uh, this subdivision that's going in. This is one of those lots on that subdivision and uh, in uh, getting a temporary certificate of occupancy by the building department, we reviewed the as-built plan. Uh, the as-built plan, um, if you just bear with me, um, just gonna try to share my screen here. This is what was submitted. Um, if you'll note, uh, commissioners, uh, this is you know what Mr. DeBacco uh, brought in, that this is um, uh, what the, the plan showed. So what you're looking at is the two things, a conservation easement, that's land that belongs to the town and a wetland area. And on the as built, as was shown, we saw this tree line uh, clearing limit. Um, so you see that clearing was done inside of the town's land, inside of the conservation commission and, excuse me, not conservation, conservation easement. You know, this is your land con and also within the wetlands. So when we went out there, um, and I'm just speaking from my personal knowledge over here, if you notice, you know, the proximity of how this was designed on the approved subdivision plans and where it was located, that this is the pin, you know, it's about 10 feet from the house. Um, yeah. Going to take us to uh, some drawing, some uh, pictures we took off the site of the house. And you can kind of see, you know, 10 feet from the house where that was supposed to be. Uh, it was clear, you know, uh, cleared further back. Um, to demonstrate, uh, you know, Derek put together um, these helpful diagrams that talk about the limits of where the conservation easement, the limit of the wetlands from the approved plan uh, for building. And now we're looking at what actually uh, got cleared and that this has a dual impact, both in the wetlands and in the conservation easement. So um, in Derek's comments, uh, he proposed uh, what Frank is referring to in these two locations, wetland restoration within the conservation, conservation easement in this location. Can you see my cursor kind of noting to one location mm -hmm. and here. Now what Frank uh, is referring to is that in this location, um, it's a native, fill pile, it's kind of high up. Um, there's prickers, there's some saplings that he mentioned. And over here in this location where we're proposing restoration um, in lieu of putting stuff back here, uh, here's another 300 feet. So that just makes up for the loss of the extra clearing. Um, what uh, the recommendation is um, from the town engineer, uh, from Derek, is that uh, the commission, you know, your action, your motion, should you choose to approve, with the conditions as recommended, is that uh, uh, the applicant, Mr. Bacco, work with town staff to create uh, 600 square feet of new wetlands to replace what was cleared. And, and here's some commentary on this. This is just phase one of um, uh, the subdivision plan. There's phase two, there's phase three, there's other clearing going on in proximity. It's okay, you know, uh, for an error or an absence um, clearing to be done, but there's also restoration that should also be done just to balance things out, just to even things out. Um, but Derek's comment, I'll just point you to the second one in comment number one, to allow for some usable yard space. That's why the wetland restoration was put in those two different locations. Mm. So let me just take you to the pictures here now. So this was clear, you know, uh, it's where my cursor is was about the limit of where it should have been. But if you're looking at the house, the nice house, you want to give the homeowner a nice lawn. Okay, we understand that. That is why the uh, town engineer Derek's proposing uh, a different location for that wetland restoration. Um, now it's up to the commission once you understand that uh, on where you want to require um, uh, the wetland restoration to be. You can take a look at the plan. You can draw on it. You can mark on it. You can make your decision on where that's where that's going to be. Um, however, you know. Just in my opinion, if you have an approved plan and you have an approved clearing limit and clearing is done beyond that, it just sets a, a, a very terrible precedent in, in two ways. One, that the clearing was actually done in, into the wetlands. And two, that the clearing was done within a town's conservation easement. And as you see, you know, in other applications that following this one, you'll see a similar precedent or a similar pattern. So, you know, the decision is not up to the engineering department to the town engineer or myself, but we're leaving it up to you to determine 
the, the what the restitution should be for this. And and uh, in the conversation in the site visit, Mr. Debaco is um, trying to work with us, you know, in accordance with whatever decision you made, so that the plantings can be plate made, and he can get his uh, final certificate of occupancy. Because right now a bond is being held in the amount of six thousand dollars until the decision is made by the commission on where the plantings will go. Um, yeah. So I hope that answers any of the questions that you had about this application. I'm just putting on both hats here from the engineering perspective and from the wetlands perspective on, you know, helping, helping to, to, to explain or outline, you know, what, what the town's staff's comments are on this. Hope that helps. Thank you very much, John. Uh, so by rights, because the land that's wetlands and the conservation easement has been cleared, it's basically it's cleared the town's land apart from the wetlands issue. Uh, so it sounds like Derek has been, is attempting to work out some sort of compromise here, not to uh, ruin the backyard, even though it is the town's land, but to put the wetlands stuff somewhere else uh, to uh, try and come up with something acceptable. Um, is that sound about what what the goal is here or what what he was thinking yeah if, if that was yeah. directed my way Brent yeah that's that's yeah. that's correct yeah. um, so the three conditions of this approval you know just referencing this memo um, from Derek dated May 13th would be one that you know there's a minimum of a 600 foot uh, new wetland area two their specifications about the type of plantings the type of seedings but third, you know, looking at where we're at, how dry and dusty it is, uh, just that there's a bond to ensure that the planting stay healthy and survive. And if they don't, you know, that that would cover just ensuring that the wetlands are restored amicably. Commissioners, uh, with, with that perspective, uh, what do you think? Do you have some other comments on uh, Derek's recommendations for a resolution here? Uh, this is Lou. Um, I'm not sure if I heard any uh, anything differently from uh, John than what I see on uh, Derek's recommendations. I do. I do want to express though that I, I am 100% um, on board for the town to work with uh, you know a homeowner or a developer to try to you know mitigate. I still see though that there's got to be an agreement between the town and Mr. Debaco. I don't think. Um, I'm, I'm not ready to say, well, you know, it's got to be here. You have to do this planting. I think the agreement's got to come from, as uh, as Commissioner Ambrose said, from the town and Mr. DeBacco. Uh, Commissioner Ambrose, uh, any? Well, any I still, uh, speaking about this, the same thing again, I still feel the same way. It's got to be worked out between the town engineer and Mr. DeBacco. It's got to be some kind of a compromise that they can both agree on and trying to stay within the regulations. Okay. Um, given that the original amount that we're talking about was 250 uh, wetlands and 600, uh, I believe, um, conservation easement, uh, sh should we at least be saying something about that uh, in terms of we believe that uh, Mr. DeBacco, you know, should reach an agreement with the town to set aside this uh, amount some way to uh, rectify it, restore it. That that should be re-examined where it's located. It, it's got to be worked out between those two parties. That's that's okay. that's the way I feel about it. Staying within the regulations. Okay. Uh, I, I, all I was suggesting there was, you know, should we talk about it? Just say an amount that that should be part of this. No. Okay. Um, if I could just um, sure. answer that one, I there's an amount suggested in the staff yeah. memo, right? Um, right. And I guess I have a question. Is there any changing in the boundary of the conservation easement, or is the homeowner's lawn this part? You know, the tip of the easement. 
does that stay that you know delineated i could speak to that ruth um there's a pin set and mm -hmm. the conservation easement going back to mm -hmm. let's take a look at the as built um so this was part of the original subdivision plan you know, yeah. because there's adjacent wetlands and adjacent town boundaries. So um, I don't believe that there's uh, any proposed action to change the conservation easement. Um, and, you know, the purpose of the conservation easement is to conserve, you know, what's, what's there to conserve the, mm -hmm. the trees and the nature of it. Um, but sometimes when ha clearing happens, clearing goes beyond that limit if it wasn't pinned or if it wasn't flagged. So all that the applicant, you know, made application as a condition for getting his CO is that um, in the subdivision approval, it was stated that for each lot, each lot has to come back before the Wetlands Commission. And upon you know doing the as built, the building department noted, oh, okay, in doing that review for final sign off after this construction is done, that extra clearing was done. So all that we're here, you know, commissioners uh, talk is made of you know an agreement. Uh, the applicant is coming because he wants to see how he wants to close this out. He, he's just looking for you to make the determination on what that restitution would be. Um, okay. You have, you know, what has been proposed by the town engineer. And I can comment that in my discussions with Frank, Frank is amenable uh, to working with town staff. So, you know, as uh, uh, there was nothing proposed um, to say what type of plantings or the location or otherwise, um, as a condition of approval, you know, per the recommendations in this memo, and you know, subject to working it out with town staff, that would be sufficient to, um, you know, keep this application moving. You know, just referencing this memo and subject to uh, approval by town staff, um, I believe would be in line with the intent of uh, Commissioner Sinzero and Commissioner Ambrose's comments about there being an agreement reached. I hope that helps. Okay, I, I, I think if we came up with a, uh, a motion, at least to require the minimum that Derek suggests, 600 square feet uh, wetland uh, to replace the areas cleared, and then with a uh, condition that this be worked out more specifically with town staff, that, that takes, I believe that might cover, I've heard you right. Can I, um, can I just- Number just, one, sure. Can I just make one comment? So I have no problem restoring the 250 square feet that the landscaper put seed on. The impacted area within the conservation easement, we didn't, all we did was clean it uh, to remove the vegetation that was invasive. I wanna just leave it alone because all I did was remove the, the shrubbery. The soils that were there are still there. The roots that were there are still there. I just wanna let it grow back and then just deal with the 250 square feet of wetlands. So you'd actually have the backyard uh, go back to what it was originally? No, when you're looking at the screen, the yellow is the conservation easement and yep. the darker green is the wetlands. Yep. So I'd like to leave the conservation as it is, undisturbed and let the soil or the vegetation that's there grow back. Um, and then your conservation is just brand new, instead of being four years old or five years old, it's six months. Uh, the wetland tip area, that would be about 250 square feet of wetland disturbance. And I'd like to resolve the 250 square feet, not 600 feet. Where would you resolve that? You're not suggesting that- looking at Another spot somewhere in that triangle up above, it's heavily infested with invasives already. Um, so maybe we move the 250 feet somewhere into that open space channel. Now, I did. so you're not actually taught, you're not going to restore that little triangle to wetlands. You, you want that 250 move somewhere else. And I would put it back if Derek wanted it, but he's proposing to move it somewhere else. Right. Well, he's also proposing a few other things, I think, too, uh, because basically it's going to let you and the homeowner use town land with, you know, for 250 square feet, basically. And I think there's, there's something to be said about that's not right. Okay. So if, if it's the 250 square feet, 
I'd like to, if you know, relocate that square footage somewhere. The conservation easement, I believe, will be fine when when it grows back in a couple more weeks. Um, so I would like to deal only with the 250 square feet of wetlands. That right. square footage to be located somewhere else. Okay, thank you, uh, commissioners. What do you think of that idea? No. Um. I'll, I guess I'll, I'll um, interject here. I, I'm not comfortable with changing. I hear Mr. DeBacco's um, uh, concerns and suggestions. I'm not, with Derek not being here, I'm not willing to uh, make any changes based on that. I would again go back to what uh, Commissioner Ambrose said. Uh, I would uh, approve this application pending, uh, you know, the agreement between Mr. DeBacco and Derek in the town on what are the recommended conditions that need to be fulfilled. Otherwise, we're going to have to table it. Um, next meeting, you know, it's not going to give very much time for them to discuss it and then have everything done by June 17th. Right. That 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 date probably wouldn't be reached. Yeah. Um, what are you are you uncomfortable with the specifying where it should go, or are you okay with the basic amount that he's talking about? Derek's talking about. Yeah, I mean, again, not ha I haven't seen it, um, and it, Mr. Debacco, and I know John's been out there, and Derek's been out there. I, I think, as uh, as was stated before, I think that you know the cool heads should uh, should meet and and determine exactly you know what needs to be done. I, I, I'm I'm good with all the numbers there, and I understand uh, you know the variables, but um, I I can't make a decision unless there's going to be an agreement. Commissioner Owen, could I offer a comment? Um, uh, Frank has been amenable to working with us on the location of the amount. You know, what is proposed is recommended. Um, should the commissioners uh, be interested in approving if uh, you could specify a minimum amount of wetland area? We noted, you know, that there was uh, 250 square feet of wetlands that isn't disputed, but now it is the other location of um, uh, getting to that 600 square feet to balance out mm -hmm. what was taken, you know, what was over cleared, um, something along the lines, just as a recommendation going off of Derek's comments of a minimum of 600 square feet, a location to be specified would, would smooth things over on giving us the amount. And then we can work with Mr. DeBacco on the location of that here on this site or in, in another uh, uh, compensatory area. If that makes any sense, Lou, if that addresses your concerns as a way to keep this moving forward, I believe that's something uh, the town, you know, engineering staff and the applicant uh, could come to agreement on. If if the commission could, you know, make a decision to approve based off of an amount and we work out the amount of the location of that, you know, out in the field together. Um, yeah. I would also recommend that uh, condition two and commission three of the memo uh, remain in place about the uh, type of plantings and seedings and that the work is bonded um, to make sure that they last through the summer. But you know, you can modify uh, condition one of the memo to state like, you know, uh, Commissioner Sanzara and Ambrose are stating that the location of where that 600 square feet of restoration is done, um, it's, you know, decided between the applicant and town staff. I'm sure we can come to that agreement, John. Commissioners, sorry. Hope that helps, just keeping it moving. Keep it moving. Okay, well, that's basically, that would be Derek's first sentence of his recommendation one with the location to be determined. Uh, the, the number two is the uh, description of what the uh, property should be restored with. And number three is the cash bond. When Mr. DeBacco referred to a bond, is that what you're talking about or is this another bond? No, I posted a $6,000 bond. And I've also, I have no issue with the plannings because I don't know what to put in there and I just want direction what yeah. plans we want. So I've posted a $6,000 bond more than what's needed for the restoration. Um, okay. So I have no problem leaving that until we resolve it. I just want to get this thing done quickly and efficiently. Okay, so two and three are, uh, there's no disagreement over it's number one. We, it seems like we're aiming towards a motion along the lines that, you know, John was talking about, uh, Commissioners, uh, any other comments on that? Questions? Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I like the way that, uh, that the 
town staff is on the right idea how, how to work it out. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, do you want to make a motion along those lines, uh, Commissioner Ambrose? Yes, I, I, I would move that uh, uh, we can approve this uh, application based on uh, the testimony that we've had today. And, uh, and leave it up to the, uh, the town engineer and Mr. DeBacco to work out the final details to okay. stay within the regulations. Do we want to keep the minimum as recommended by Derek, 600 square feet? Uh, yeah. I think he has his reasons for that. And uh, that's one of the things that he can, should, should be worked out between the parties. So, so you don't want to have a uh, minimum amount as has been suggested? Well, is Mr. DeBacco uh, against that 600 square feet? Is that why it's, it's, it's even a question? I, I am. I, so this is what I mean. The two have to sit down and really talk it out and, de and decide what's, uh, what's acceptable for both parties. We, we can talk about this until we're blue in the face and we're not gonna come up with an answer. It's gotta be between the authority and the, uh, and the property, the owner. Yeah. Um, can I make a comment, Brent, if, it, if, it, if it's all right with the commission? Uh, sure, okay. Sure. Um, to Commissioner Ambrose, um, the legal presentation we had with the town attorney maybe a couple of months ago helped, helped me in my role with this. Um, to, to be to be as as, <laughs> as frank as I can, you you commission members, when you're in a quorum and we're meeting like here, you are the authority. Um, you know, I, I'm your staff. I do the best I can on a day to day basis, along other duties. But part of the reasons why myself or the town engineer can't make this decision is because you know it's a big decision. You know, it affects uh, developers and livelihoods. So um, why we're looking before, why we, we came, why we're applying, the applicant came, and we're all here is to, to help make that decision. If you want to table the discussion until later, I don't, I'm not 100% certain that there can be an agreement come to as to where if, you know, 600 feet of the wetlands was cleared accidentally and we're, we're going to be having this come up uh, in another location in this development and on and on. But, you know, in, in what's right and what's fair in, in your eyes, um, you know, 600 feet was cleared of wetlands and conservation and 600 feet is restored. We're okay with locating it, but that amount, you know, uh, uh, the applicant in his, in his testimony was, was saying only 250 feet of the wetlands. If that's something you want to decide, that's completely up to you, but that's not the recommendation being made by town staff, uh, you know, on the record per the regulations at this time, you know, just a one-to-one -one ratio, no penalty, no imposition. I, I hope that helps just clarify things or move them, things along. I, yeah, commissioner said, I didn't see who was first. So, oh, go ahead. Commissioner oh, Calabrese. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to make the point uh, one of the first applications that I was involved with on this commission, um, it was a two for one restoration for wetland loss. And um, I would, you know, maintain consistency and how you treat these issues. It was very similar to the Pragmites that was mowed down. Um, Good. All right, Commissioner Cinzero. Um, yeah, I have a question, uh, Mr. DeVacco. Um, are, are you gonna be willing, and maybe I heard it wrong, um, to uh, identify another location somewhere that would be okay to restore the 600 square feet? or is it just that you don't want to do it on this property? No, on, on that application that's there, <clears throat> if uh, John scrolls down, you'll see an area where Derek wants to do some restoration. So what I'm saying is the 400 square feet of conservation easement, we haven't captured it. It's still there, it's still yours. And all we've disturbed is the 250 square feet of wetlands. And Derek, is there it is, and he's recommending where to put it. Um, John, if I can go back to you then um, as a follow-up, you had stated that um, if we put in a minimum uh, of the 600 uh, square feet, that that could have another location identified. So did I hear it could be in a, a, not on this property, but somewhere else, or did I mishear that? 
the commission can you know decide wherever you'd like but speaking to uh, uh, Commissioner Calabrese's point, um, historically, this commission has maintained a, a two to one uh, penalty. Is that correct, Ruth? You know, in your historical, I just want to clarify that. that, and, that was... and, and my historical is one. <laughs> <laughs> I, just want, I just want to put that on the table. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> yeah, so, so uh, you know, within the site, within the boundary, uh, you know, other restoration can be done. Um, even Mr. DeBacco mentioned that the location and the timing of where to make that restoration, um, he can work out because he currently owns some property and other ones. All we're looking for is um, uh, extra clearing was done. He's looking to restore the wetlands, maybe uh, give the, the homeowners some lawn and just have restoration done um, in other areas that were cleared. Um, but I guess I, I don't want to distract the discussion from uh, Phragmites or poison ivy or other stuff, you know, just put plantings back in and then the town will have a higher quality, better, better wetlands restored than what was there. That seems like an improvement without over penalization. But again, it's, it's just you, you telling us it's got to be 600 square feet and we'll work out where that is. And, and uh, that, that would be a, a condition of approval that I believe Mr. DeBacco would be happy to work with us on you know, after the decision is taken by the commission. I mean, you know, by rights, we, we do have the authority to direct how much and where. And, um, you know, we could we could just say to Mr. DeBacco, we want the wetlands, those 250 square feet back the way they were. So, I mean, all this is shown first that Derek is amenable to some sort of compromise. We, we've shown some you know, the same thing. The two for one thing does make sense to me. Uh, we've done it before and uh, I see no reason why uh, we shouldn't do it again. Uh, something's been done here that shouldn't have been done. So we're, we're gonna take advantage and rectify it. Right here. So uh, that's my opinion anyway, so. I guess um, I, I would say at the least there should be, as the agent has asked for some minimum amount. Um, and then if we want to put it that they work it out together, that that's fine too. Um, Derek has some ideas on this. I'm sure he could work it out with Mr. DeBacco pretty quickly. Um, I don't know. So anyways, um, other, other comments, opinions? Um, the, the only thing I would, uh, I would ask then if um, Commissioner uh, Ambrose's approvals on the uh, table that we add uh, a minimum amount of wetlands uh, to be restored uh, in the amount of minimum 600 square feet and that will be decided by the town, Mr. DeBacco in an area to be identified and agreed to. Is that okay with you, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Ambrose? Yes, that would be fine. Okay. Do, do we want to add in uh, some reference to uh, Derek's uh, number two and number three? Um, to, the, to your motion? Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, yeah, I forgot to add that to, to, uh, to Dave. So, yes. The two and three stay uh, consistent with what Derek has identified. Okay. All right. So uh, we have a motion here to have the minimum of 600 square feet um, and have it worked out between the town and Mr. DeBacco. Uh, we have a number two, which is the restoration improvements, what they consist of. And number three is the uh, bond. Uh, do, do you have a second on that? I'll second. Second. Okay. Commissioner Calabrese, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, anybody opposed? Motion passes uh, for application number 742-22. Okay, we have a second application from CCC Construction, number 743-22. 14 Vinnie Drive, lot 18, parcel 043-023. Uh, it's an application to conduct additional lot clearing. 
Um, Mr. DeBacco, uh, want to speak to that application? Yep. So on, on this particular lot, again, I, I walked John through it. So hopefully he can clarify it somewhere in the middle for us what we're trying to do. The house had this new lot has been sold. The homeowners are uh, moving in from Cromwell. They, uh, I came in originally. I asked Derek if we can go in uh, along the property line and just mow down the, the invasives again so that we can identify what trees we can keep with the homeowner if they wanted to keep any. Uh, he did grant me that permission to go in and do that mowing in those areas so that we can selectively see what trees would be worth leaving, if any, uh, due to the amount of uh, vines that have been growing through it, again, all the other invasives. Um, so with that, we then brought the owner back of the property who was buying the home and identified trees uh, that they would like to remove. Um, the property has been pinned and we have flagged the trees with pink ribbons um, and we are not exceeding the line from pin to pin in the back. Um, and we're just looking to get to that line. And the reason why we wanna get there is uh, the trees that we're referring to are heavily intertwined with uh, vines anywhere between one inch to two and a half inches in diameter. So they go all the way up it. Uh, they are putting a stranglehold on those trees um, and they do lean slightly into the lot because they gravitate uh, towards the sun. So the homeowner is concerned that uh, as, the, as the years go by and the trees start to get worse and that they would fall on his home. Um, so he's asking to have those trees removed the corner piece where it's not gonna be affected to his home. He likes the buffer because of the lights coming in from the two rod highway side would not hit his house. Um, so we uh, left those there as what we're proposing. And I think in the end, there's maybe a half a dozen, dozen trees that need to come down that he's looking for. And on the far left of the property, there is one 10 inch tree that is dead. Uh, it's just standing there. We wanna take that one as a safety precaution also. Um, and uh, that would be the limits of the, of the clearing of the house. Uh, we've located the house that we're going to put there. Um, Derek thinks that I need to do this in two applications, so one to do the clearing limits, and then one to do the placement of the house. Uh, the placement of the house has to be where it is because there's a sanitary sewer right behind it, so I can't move the house. It will go there. It, it can't go forward, left, right, or anywhere else. Um, the elevations are going to be level with the house to the left and to the right, and the water is going to be graded away from the home, and the foundation floor will be raised up and out of the water table for, so that water won't go into the home, and we can daylight, daylight a sump pump, sump pit pipe, I could say that three times fast, uh, to the exterior of the property. Um, so that's going to be the overall consensus of this property that we're looking to do. That is the floor plan that the owner has chosen. It's a two-story home. Um, and that's what we're looking to do today. All right, uh, commissioners, uh, any questions for Mr. DeBacco? Uh, Commissioner, uh, I, oh, and I do have um, one, one question. Uh, how many trees uh, for safety reasons or other are you gonna additionally uh, look to take down? So the one on the left corner is the, is the dead one, is the only one there. Okay. Then there's where the, um, the pipe comes out. There's an easement that's granted to the town for storm drainage. They are asking if we can just clean up the small uh, soft saplings that are, that are encroaching the, um, the piping uh, that exits uh, just to keep it cleaner uh, and visible so it's not a hazard. And then to the where right where it says the town of Weathersfield is where most of the trees are, and I believe um, there's probably a dozen, anywhere from three inch trees to ten inch trees. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah. um, I have a question, Mr. DeBacco. The on the left left hand side as you're looking up the lot that that dead tree you're talking about that's the one that has no bark on it it's white yes okay so and that's the only thing that's over there yes otherwise you go about halfway through the lot and you're basically you and the town agree on what's being done 
it's it's the right hand side where there's a, a question. Can you say there's yes. a dozen trees, a dozen trees in there? Yep, I, I, I marked them all in pink ribbon where I don't want to go. I guess what I want to save. Uh, I walked that with John so he understands what we're trying to do. Um, so we're trying to work that out so that we don't have any issues down the road later. That's that's seems to work well when we did it last time. So I just want to keep that momentum moving. Uh, any other questions by the commissioners? Comments? I see one of our new members is here. Uh, Commissioner Barassi, you're here. You have any comments on this? No, okay. Uh, Commissioner Nelson? Okay. All right. Um, so Mr. DeBacco wants to remove a dozen trees that are beyond what the uh, town wanted them to do originally. Um, do we want to let him do that is one question. The other question is, uh, uh, Derek uh, Gregor recommends that uh, we have Mr. DeBacco put some trees up apparently elsewhere on the lot. So I guess the question is, what what do you think of that? Uh, uh, Commissioner Ambrose. Uh, well, I I guess the time to do the changes is now, and uh, and the, the degree of how much you're going to remove and where you're going to plant new trees is certainly not my decision. But the time the timing is now. It should be done yeah. at this stage. So. Here again, staff should be able to work this out with him. I, I do have one comment before we go there is that the new trees to plant, I would have to go talk to the owners to see if they want to pay for those trees. Um, because the, the, the house yeah. is under is under contract with the with the property. Okay. Do, do you have anything already uh, in place to put some trees up in that property? No, they don't want any. No, they don't want any trees. Okay. They want to eventually just you know keep it clean, neat, and safe for the children to run. Could I offer some comment, Commission Commissioners? Uh, certainly. Okay. So, Commissioners, just direct your attention to um, the screen. Just give me a thumbs up if you can see where the approved clearing limits was. Okay. So, um, you know, we're going to talk about violations because back in October of 2016, uh, exist. Uh, excessive clearing had been done on the adjacent slots to the north 17 and 19. Um, the subdivision approval had told the applicant that there was to be no clearing of the individual lots until the building permit uh, for each individual lot was approved by the town. And you know, that's just according to the regulations to, to limit the amount of storm water leaving this site. So you saw, you know, from where the approved clearing limits were, and I'll take you back to where the existing clearing limits are. That's how much extra clearing was done. The purpose of this application is for additional clearing beyond that one. So, you know, that we have what was originally approved, what was a violation from maybe six years ago, and now <laughs> to, to finish the job. So for the house lot, if you look at where it is in the buildable square, it's up at the front. So this clearing um, it, that's, that's proposed is, is not for uh, necessary for construction. Um, so the house is constructed at the front, the additional clearings at the rear, and the two recommendations from you know, town staff, from you know, Derek Greger, from you know, myself, putting on my you know, professional engineer hat, is that uh, the applicant should be required to plant new trees on the property to replace the trees removed without proper approvals. Uh, the, uh, myself and um, you know, Vice Chairman Owen went back and forth about what type and quantity, and uh, uh, we wanted to recommend, you know, to supplement what was in the memo that the type, size, and quantity or consistency should be similar to what's out there. So if you have maples out there, if you have oaks out there, whatever's put back should be, you know, uh, uh, Mary, Mary Fraser, who was on, she wants uh, natural plantings, you know, natural, uh, consistent. And then further, you know, in addition, the recommendation, you know, by 
by town staff, your staff, is uh, that a clear statement for the remainder of this subdivision, which has multiple phases, is that the applicant and developer is not to clear other individual lots um, until you know getting approval from the town. Um, any other violations beyond that could result in fines or restoration uh, that you know will have to be determined by by yourselves by the commission. So that's the simple recommendation. Just you know, in summary, cl ex existing clearing was done. Now more clearing is proposed. Um, you know, without approvals, we're trying to get get it done in agreement with approvals. But this isn't the first violation. We don't want other violations. And you know, we're we're recommending or suggesting up to you um, that new tr trees should be planted. You know, and I know that doesn't agree with um, a new homeowner wanting a clear lot. Uh, you know, with plenty of yard space in the backyard. But you know, this is what was approved. This is what you yourselves, you know, approved in the past. So um, just trying to stay consistent. You know, historically. I hope that helps. Just provide some clarity on Derek's comments as he's as he's not here. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I, you know, uh, John, I do have one other question. For example, they're, they're clearing, they're putting a foundation in lot 20. Um, as it I was obvious, I did take a drive out there to take a look at the trees, but I have to see that as passing. Are the permits in as needed to clear that lot? Yeah, we have no issue with any clearing uh, everything else is okay and with an approval okay. at that location um so you know i know i know that's not part okay. of this but as no, it's no, just yeah no issue no issue to your question okay so can i just restate something again sure i've gone in so I, going back six years unknown clarified mistakes happened we rectified them we came back in as you notice we did lot 20 we followed it right to a t we're asking for 18 and we're going back six years on issues. When, when the, the penalty then was to bring every lot back individually and I am complying. Now I was only supposed to comply with the lots that but any conservation easement and any wetlands. And I will still comply to that. I am not gonna be held to a statute that any lot that I choose to do that does not abut that has to come back to approval. That's not the town regulations. And I'm not gonna abend to that. I will amend, amend to wetlands conservation because of my error when I did 19, 18, and 17. My mistake, I get it, I'm gonna pay that. But to go two through seven, 14, 15, uh, nine, eight, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna give up my rights. And as for this lot on 18, I will simply tell the homeowner, the town won't grant any more trees to be cut. That's what they're gonna live with. So I'm not planting anything new anymore. Uh, I didn't quite follow you on the last part of that statement, Mr. Oh. DeMarco. So if, if the just, homeowner... Just lot, lot 18, okay. Lot 18. If the homeowner is asking to do these trees, I'm going to tell them the town said no. I'm not going to compensate to remove any more trees, and then I'm not going to pay to put new trees in. I'm just not going to bother removing the trees and telling them they can't do nothing with them, and they can deal with them on their own, and I choose not to install any new trees. Six okay. years ago is not a reason to be penalized from six years back. Sorry, keep muting myself. Uh, okay, so uh, we know your position on things here. Um, meanwhile, back to the commission, what do we wanna do? Do we wanna allow Mr. DeBacco to do more clearing on that lot? Uh, with the directive to um, put some trees there. We want to leave things uh, the way they are um, with the existing trees. Well, I, 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 we, I, we I only for Mr. Oh, go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. Commissioner Sanzaro, I'm sorry. I, I couldn't see. Oh, that's screen. okay. Oh, that's okay. Um, we just heard from Mr. DeBacco and uh, uh, what I just heard is he's changing um, what we're going to be looking for here now, and then removing Derek's uh, recommendation that he do 12 additional trees by telling the homeowner he's not going to clear anymore, even the ones that may be uh, dead and in a precarious position. So that's what I heard. So I think number one for a recommendation comes off. Number one, what? The, the recommendation by Derek that if we approve 
um, additional clearing that of the trees that um, uh, Mr. DeVacco needs to uh, put, uh, you know, additional trees back on. He has just said that he's not going to uh, do that, and he's going to tell the homeowners that there's going to be no additional trees taken down. Um, so I think, number one, it, it comes off the application. But the question I have is, is there a danger now uh, with the dead trees or, you know, falling on, on someone now that has been brought up? I mean, they're, 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 like I said, I, I did take a look out there. I didn't walk the property like Mr. DeVacco and the agent has done, but I, it, there is a dead tree in the, if you're looking at the property in the left-hand corner, and it's, it's a good sized tree. And, and you know, it, I, I'd say it needs to be taken down by somebody at some time. As far as the rest goes, um, Apparently, uh, if I read the memo correctly, it's not going to impact construction of the building. So uh, apparently it's something that the proposed property owner would like done. Commissioner or Chairman Oman, could, could I yeah. offer some pictures? I could throw it into the record with the secretary. Sure. I took some pictures. I'm just trying to sure. be helpful from that walkthrough thing, yep. just to throw it up. Um, if you could just let me know if you could see the screen. Uh, this is the okay. clearing limit. Frank, this is what we walked, correct? This is the, the back of the property. And uh, uh, you can see the, the tree in question. You know, is this <laughs> tree? Yeah. So see I just the, wanted, up the tree, they kill it. Yeah. I just That's going to happen on the other 12 trees. I wanted to throw that into help. And if I could just offer some commentary, Commissioner Sanzaro, on um, uh, the uh, approval that the you know, applicant would be to come back. Um, the memo that you have in your packet from 2016, it, it just says that uh, the clearing was done on 17 and 19 um, before coming for a plot plan. So you know, before coming in with, hey, this is where we wanna put the house, clearing was done on that. And uh, if I'm reading the intent of comment number two, uh, it's just speaking that for each individual lot going forward in the subdivision, um, the limits just have to be approved by the town, not the wetland commission. I just want to get that on the record so that there's no clarity or misunderstanding that it's not that each plot plan um, that Mr. Gabaco comes forward with uh, would be required to come to the wetlands commission. They would just simply have to be a plot plan presented to the town on the approved clearing limits, um, you know, going forward for, for number two. So I, I hope that helps. I just heard that in the record and I just wanted to clarify that. So again, with that item, John, item number two, when it comes to lots one through seven, eight, nine, and 10, I am not gonna come through for approval because those don't abut the conservation easement or the wetlands. And that was the penalty that I agreed to do for the properties going from 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19 and 20, that I would come individually and present each one for approval. I will amend to that, I will agree to that, and I am proceeding as such and doing as such. I'm not gonna tie my hands any further because the town does not have the right to do one through nine. So, so okay. commissioners, I, I'm, I know Mr. Baco is addressing his comments to me. I'm just addressing my comments to you as your staff. Um, the, that was to come to the Wetlands Commission. Uh, what's proposed in item number two is not to come to the Wetlands Commission. It's just to come to the building department for plot plan approval. I, I hope I'm being as clear as I can on what, what the violation was in 2016. I am in agreement with what you know Mr. DeBacco is saying about those rest specified lots, but without subdivision approval, with the way that the subdivision is approved, the clearing of future individual lots. And when we say town approval in comment number two on Derek's memo dated uh, May 13th is not to come before the Inland Wetlands Commission. It is to come with a plot plan to the town. At that time, clearing can be done on the individual lots. Uh, does that make sense to everyone? Is, is, is I hope that is, I'm getting that clear on the record. I what you're saying. So then why put it in the memo to the wetlands agency? Uh, okay, Mr. DeVacco, let, let me ask about that. Okay, I'm looking at your 2016 memorandum. Uh, and that reflects a number of lots 
Um, I see referenced in it 17, 19, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. I mm -hmm. don't see the other lots that Mr. DeBacco is concerned about. So presumably we're only concerned about those that are listed in that memo. Those are the only ones that we can speak to. Uh, so I, I can understand the objection if we give them a generalized, you have to go for everything. We may not have the authority to do that. Uh, we can only speak to the ones that we've already spoken to and he's apparently uh, supposed to be coming to us on those particular lots. Is that right? Is that basically the situation? Okay, so right now we're dealing with one lot. We're dealing with how much should he be allowed to clear it? And the only thing I can say is there's at least one dead tree. We saw a picture of it. And I guess that is an issue because of its location. So. That would be one thing. As for the other ones, uh, that was that lengthwise picture. I don't know. Uh, what does anybody think about, about that situation? Well, I'm a little confused now, um, so please bear with me. If Mr. Sure. DeBacco uh, stated, and that, if that's still accurate, that he's not going to go back to the homeowner and tell them that uh, he can do more clearing because the town's recommending that uh, we, he plants more trees, he's not going to do that. So does that make the application moot at this point? You know, I mean, I, I suppose we could tell him, okay, you go ahead and cut that dead tree down because we don't want anybody to get killed by it, but we're not going to let you do the other things. Uh, or, 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 you know, mm. or you can do that, but you're going to have to plant trees and, and give an approval on that basis. So I think, yeah, we could still do it. Anybody else? Mr. Chairman, it doesn't make sense to leave a dead tree standing up there. I mean, that one's got to come out, but yep. who's going to do it and who's going to pay for it? I mean, got to be some kind of a compromise here between people to get this done. Okay. Uh, any, any other commissioners, any comments? Anybody want to propose a, member, um, a motion at this time? No. I'm not even clear what the what the motion would entail at this point, to be honest with you. Okay. Could I can offer I, so, oh, go, go ahead. Have the original <laughs> approval. Is that it wasn't submitted on the record. I can okay. dig it up uh, you know and bring it in if you want a table. Um, but I guess what we're what we're seeing is that there's a history of uh, additional clearing. On, on lots going forward. And, you know, the town staff is concerned for the rest of the subdivision in phase two and phase three. Um, you know, I can show you the screen again, you know, when you have it in front of you, uh, where the original approval was granted. Um, and then if you look at where the existing tree line is now, that was how much further than the original approval. So, um, you know, there's a saying, you know, I heard when I was young, like it's easier to get uh, ask for forgiveness than to get permission. We're trying to stay ahead of this and work work uh, amenably as Commissioner Ambrose is making to come to agreement. But we have, um, you know, uh, uh, not issued any further violations on additional clearing with any fines or penalties imposed. But what we're seeing is um, clearing has gone on beyond the approved limits and additional clearing is proposed as part of this application and the recommendation by your staff uh, is that additional plantings uh, should be required because this is not the first violation and new trees on the same property should replace the trees that were removed from the lot with without the proper approvals that's that's the position you know it's a recommendation but then the second just thinking for the rest of the this commission working with this applicant on the amount of lots going forward each time, just to be clear that other individual lots should not be cleared without, on the one hand, those designated as Frank Mo mentioned that he agreed to, to come back before this commission with, but others without going to pull for building department with a plot plan. 
that is simply to, pre to preserve your, you know, your own regulations because additional clearing beyond what is approved and uh, beyond the time when you're ready to build, uh, it, 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 there's no detention out there for it and it limits the impact to the downstream areas. So you know, that's the reason why the intent of the, the recommendation. I, I only hope that helps clarify things, commissioners. You know, that's, that's my role here. I'm not as experienced as Commissioner Calabrese, but she helps me out. I'm, I'm just trying to <laughs> advise you accordingly as your staff on the intent of the recommendations made by, by town staff. I hope, I hope that helps. Oh, I can I just say something? Can I just say something real quick on, on like, three, but John, real quick, is that possible? Yeah, yeah, very briefly, because we've okay. got to get to a- We made a mistake six years ago. We've acknowledged it. A punishment was issued and we're complying. I am back in front of you with the new application as the approval of the punt and the punishment from last time. Do not carry them forward from one to the other because they don't work that way. You can't go back six years and implement new fines and new penalties on something that was done six years ago. The penalty was issued. I am compliant. I do everything that I do on that for those lots that but that property for conservation or wetlands, I get approval first. Now on lot 16, the landscaper did take 250 square feet. I wasn't there to control them. I was on vacation. I apologize. For lot 20, I'm right on the line, exactly where I said it was gonna be. I've identified it. I put the silt fence up. I've agreed to it. I've done it. Okay. Now I'm asking right, you to individually. Oh, okay. Okay, Mr. Duaco, I, I think we we need to hear from the commissioners on this and decide. I think one thing, I, I question whether we need to issue any sort of clear statements on things. We do have regulations that govern wetlands in town. They do provide for violations. If the town staff goes out there and issues, finds a violation, issues a letter, we can issue fines on that basis. We don't need to do something else additionally. Uh, as far as number one goes, do we want to let Mr. DeVaco, do we want to give him approval to cut more trees or not? I guess that's the question. Uh, first of all, do we have a motion to allow him to cut the additional trees as he requests uh, with the replacement of those trees? Anybody want to make that motion? Yeah, I can. Uh, yeah, I, 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 would, uh, I would say to approve that um, the trees can be uh, cleared um, and then the additional trees would have to be planted. Um, if he was just to, I want to put in a caveat there that if that dead tree was the only one that was going to come down, I don't think we have to harness him with planting one tree to replace that. No. Does that make so sense? So would you rather make a motion just to permit that one tree? Would you rather sit and have it that way? I don't want to take uh, anything out of Mr. DeBacco's hands on the application because then, then, I'm, then we're changing the application dramatically. Okay. All right. Then we um, we can we can do we want to have a motion just strictly on his application with no conditions, caveats, or what have you. Then, want to make that I, then I will. Okay. Then I would offer to. Uh, um, approve uh, the application for the clearing if um, the trees were gonna be replaced in kind, uh, pending the, um, the, the, uh, the identified species for number, for number one. Okay. So you're going to have, allow him to cut it if he replaces those. Is that correct? Okay, that's the motion. Do I have a second? Uh, a question. Sure. Is this, is this motion for just removing the one dead tree? No. No, no this it, is... it's, for the, it's for everything. Commissioner Ambrose, I was thinking it was for the whole uh, uh, area he wants to clear, but the replacement would be one for one. For, uh, he takes down two trees, he plants two trees. Okay. That's the motion. Do I have a second on that? I'll second it. Okay, Commissioner Calabrese seconds it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? 
to oppose. Okay, so the application is approved on that basis. So can I just ask a quick question? Sure. If I don't want to cut any trees down, I'm not doing anything, correct? You don't want to cut any trees down, we're not compelling you to. Okay, and so if I go that route, uh, just real quick, Derek wants me to, once I'm done with plotting the house officially, he wants me to refile through wetlands. Do I need to? If I'm uh, not going to. That, that would go back to the original uh, way back years ago, wouldn't it? And you were uh, provided with uh, conditional approval you had to bring forward uh, on the properties, as I recall. Right. So on, on that's the. A, that's a. That's yeah. a whole different issue. Yeah, Frank, you know, to answer based off of that, yeah, you know, you have to come in with your building plan and this commission can approve it, but with uh, the no clearing or the clearing as specified by the approval. Yeah, I won't do any clearing. I'm just going to resubmit the plan that you have in front of you that shows the house there. So that's why I'm asking, do I need to refile what you already have? Uh, yeah, for another application to come before the yeah. commission. Okay. Right. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yep. <laughs> okay, um, final application for tonight, 745-22, Town of Wethersfield, 1860 Reservoir Access Road, parcel 050-001, application to install pipe crossing and reconstruct gravel access drive. Uh, who's speaking for the applicant? Uh, that, that would be me. Uh, okay. Um, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to put up um, the presentation that we have. Uh, we hope you're familiar with the 1860 reservoir. I can throw up some pictures, but um, you can see that this is um, an access road um, that gets us to the uh, reservoir. Just let me know if you're able to see my screen, please. No. We have a yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what we've got here is the location of an access road that's in, in really poor shape. Um, it, it has rutting, it has ponding. Uh, so what we're proposing is uh, rebuilding and regrading with um, some drainage associated with it to kind of keep it in better shape uh, going forward. Um, we have, just give me a minute minute to get this in front of me. Um, 350 feet of existing gravel road. It's on town property. Um, and, you know, there's just been a lot of complaints on it. Uh, it affects public access. Uh, so uh, the town has done, you know, repairs uh, minorly, you know, just regrading, but we still have issues over and over. So we did some soil borings and we saw that um, the sand in it just kind of affects the stability of it. Um, and so uh, what we're proposing um, and what we have going on here is, uh, it's really fascinating. It's, it's gonna be with woven geotextile fabric and that's beneath 12 inches of process space. And that'll give us you know, more stability and structure. Um, I'll also try to zoom in a little bit and just let you see that we're proposing to put some drainage in a 12 inch ductile uh, pi iron pipe um, with riprap on either end, just to ensure that uh, stormwater runoff uh, from the south uh, gets conveyed uh, to the north, and it'll have splash plants to prevent scour. Um, the road shoulders will be stabilized, and silt fence um, you'll it be installed as you see in purple uh, to ensure that erosion is you know is prevented. Um, so if you know we grant approval, town forces are prepared and willing to do this in the summer of uh, 2002. But uh, you know, happy to answer any questions that you've got. Um, you know, this is a nice improvement to the town. Let me see if I can throw up some pictures of what the road looks like. Yeah, here you go. Um, so this is the vicinity of where we're, we're looking to do it. And the, the running and the ponding is just, is just terrible. You know, we couldn't even get the truck through um, from time to time. So that's, that's what we're proposing. And we want to get approval from your, from the commission for. Thank you very much. Um, questions from the commissioners? Commissioner Zanzaro. Oh. We can't hear you, Lou. 
I'm sorry, I was on mute. I was coughing. Um, I think we approved some um, improvements a, a, a couple of years ago now to that. And uh, what I was hoping for is exactly what's presented here, because that really didn't do anything. Uh, having been down the road with the kids all the time, it's, you know, there's a lot of washouts. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, I, I agree. It's it's quite quite messy down there. I haven't been in a while just because it is uh, it's not a great place to go. The car. I, I, I do have a question though. Um, this is uh, as far as in the middle of uh, enforcement of uh, who's in there and what they're doing in there. Uh, when it was the road that we're looking at, uh, washed out and potholed, it sort of limited the traffic. Now that we're going to repair the road um, and make it more conducive to traffic going down there, will it uh, be patrolled uh, to the extent of additional traffic? I, I, I'll draw your attention to that there's a gate um, that PD yeah. puts off of Highland Street for access. Oh, yeah. And, you know, uh, I know it's not a wetlands matter, just put on my engineering hat. I, I know that the, the PD uh, monitor that, you know, open and close it, um, you know, uh, along with others. And I know they've monitored it when, when it's open. So, you know, assuming that once the road is open and there's more access, um, it'll be on their patrol, patrol watch. All right. uh, regularly. Yeah, I live right around the corner. So I just wanted to make sure. Okay. I figured that. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Any other commissioners? Any, everybody's happy with uh, what the town has proposed and the steps they're going to take? And no evident impacts on the wetlands? Okay, anybody want to make a motion to approve the application? This is Clark. I would make a motion to approve application 745-22. Okay, um, do I have a second? Second. Okay, Commissioner Sanzaro, uh, have a motion, any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, anybody opposed? Yeah, the application is approved. Thank you, John. Thank okay, you. Con yeah. Conservation Commission business, we don't have any. Uh, we taken a look at what records they had, John, and we're all square. We have nothing to do there. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no items have come for conservation okay. other than uh, uh, the conservation easement that we went through in the first application. Okay. So. All right. Thank you. Um, general business. The, the first thing we have is approval of minutes. Um, they're very, very lengthy, very thorough, cover a lot of ground from our meeting with the town attorney and uh, the discussion there. I looked through it and there were some typos and other things that I have. I don't know if all of you had a chance to do that yet. What I was gonna suggest maybe is that if you could, maybe in the next uh, week or so, take a look at it. If you have any uh, comments or um, you see some typos or anything, send them to me on an email. I'll compile them all, and I'll send them to John so that he can have a, a, a final copy made up for us to approve at our next meeting and perhaps discuss when uh, Ryan's here, a uh, regular chairperson. Does that sound okay with you? Or? Fine. Thank you. That, okay. Um, well, how about if that's acceptable to you, how about if I ask if you could get your comments to me would June 6th be a decent day for me to put these together, John, and get them to you? By all means. That, okay, if you would get your comments or anything to me by then, I'll put them together and I'll send one, you know, final you know, thing to John so that uh, he can get uh, taken care of. And, and I think it was a very, very good session that we had. There were some things I heard that the attorney said that are different from the way we've been doing business, I think would be valuable to air them out one more time in a short discussion of the minutes and uh, you know, that we can move on in the process. Okay, 
correspondence, we don't have any, uh, except for an email from uh, Dave Ambrose. Dave is going to call it a career with us after 31 plus years. Uh, he's been here through thick and thin for a long time. He's seen, I'm sure, the law develop and a lot of process. And uh, you now he's had a lot of expertise and experience that we're going to miss. So uh, wish you well, Dave. And I'm sure all the commissioners are you know, going to miss you too. Um, take care and enjoy your retirement from me. In Thank you very much, Brian. Thank you. And just on, on that matter, um, Dave, uh, Mr. Commissioner Amber, excuse me, um, <laughs> if you wouldn't mind um, just, you know, still planning on attending, uh, you know, our first in-person meeting back, that would be on June 15th or so. Um, you know, if you wouldn't mind, it's been a, it's been a long, long history, but um, uh, we, we would be grateful if you wouldn't mind attending, even uh, whether or not um, you, you filed any anything with um, the town clerk um, at that time, uh, is that correct, Commissioner Owen? In line with, you know, our discussions for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that okay, Dave? You know, just uh, yes, 30 it is. Long, yeah, thirty years is a long time. We'd love to, you know, see you or any commissioners who are able to back in person when, when, uh, when we're able to. And we anticipate being back in person at the town hall. Um, hopefully, you know, in, for our junior. Thank you. And that would be very nice. If you could do it, Dave, it'd be appreciated. I, I'll, I'll be at that meeting. Thank you very much. And, and I also wanted to say that I, um, I, I do want to be done with it, but uh, I'll stay on the commission as long as you need me on, if you need to have a quorum, if it, if it goes on for another month or two. Okay. Thank you very much, Dave. We'll certainly keep it in mind. Uh, Commissioner yeah. Owen, can I ask uh, David something? Uh, I, I served on the commission a long time. David, you've been there for 30 years. Is there some caveat where the commission can vote to keep you on, even if you don't want to be? <laughs> Good draft. <laughs> maybe, maybe somebody come up with a salary for me. <laughs> uh, there, there you go. go. <laughs> After 30 years, you get a stipend. Okay. All right, that's all the business for tonight. I, I thank you all very much for putting up with me, filling in for Brian. I'm sure it'll be much more efficient the next go around when he's back. So uh, once again, do, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved, Brent. Thank you for a good job tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you absolutely. Sir. Okay, a second? I'll second that. Absolutely. Zero. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody Thank you, opposed? everybody. Oh, no. Okay. Thanks very much. Have a good bye week. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.